declared war. But some believe there is still hope. I always knew you returned. Welcome back to Your Geek News. This next one is a flip from a director we haven't seen in a while. Thankfully. Mm-hmm, M. Night Shyamalan. And if you think back to his last movie, The Crappening, in 2008, you were probably hoping you would never, ever see anything from him ever again, or, ever. Okay, or at least for a long, long while. But his latest, The Last Airbender, is a film he wrote and directed, but mm -hmm. adapted from someone else's story. Which means he couldn't out Shyamalan himself for once. And so the ending was not the biggest deal. He focused on a story telling, not a story ending. So let's take a look at this Nickelodeon adventure as a standalone live action movie, and then as an adaptation of an American produced Asian themed story. To start with, Shyamalan kind of has his head up his own butt. Because every movie he's done has just gotten worse and worse and worse, and he's tried harder and harder to outdo himself. But for once, he did something that was not a pretentious attempt to outdo himself with a bunch of Hitchcock shots and just finally made a movie. Oh my gosh, well you know what, it puts back some much needed faith in the fact that this man does know how to make a movie. I mean, was it perfect? No. Was it a sixth sense? Well, no, but this was his best opening weekend since Signs. It was close to 60 million bucks. Which is it's actually pretty good. It's been a while. Yeah. And you know what? It was entertaining. It was entertaining and had some really cool visual effects and a pretty compelling story with some uber cool mythology. Now, there was a lot of concern about the child actor mm. cast to play Aang. You may remember absolutely no trailers had him saying a single word on camera. <laughs> no ringer. You know what? His first scene was god awful. I agree. Of. Yeah, no, I, I didn't really like him. I didn't think he sold it really, but he grew on me, you know, as the movie progressed. But yeah, the first impression on the audience, bad. That's kind of crappy to have your first impression be oh. not that memorable. He was kind of vacant. Night, what was going on? The yeah. first scene is your first impression, and I was getting a total Anakin vibe. Mm. And then, all of a sudden, the script didn't suck. His acting didn't suck. He was good. I really, really enjoyed him. By the time the movie was halfway through, I forgot about that first horrible scene you wrote, Knight. Yeah, pretty much. Horrible the... scene you wrote, Knight. Okay, calm down. Let's get on to the other characters. Katara, what did you think of Katara? Uh, you know what? She was pretty good. Yeah. I, en I really enjoyed the interplay between her and Aang. It, it, it really worked for me that Sokka was the older brother, felt older than I was expecting. I love that it was Jasper. Come on, let's just say it. Let's just yeah. put it out there. Jasper from Twilight. Jasper, you came as a second fiddle in two movies this weekend. At least this time you didn't have a bad Texan accent. Oh my gosh. And then I work. loved seeing Dev Patel from Slumdog Millionaire as Prince Zuko. Yeah. That was kind of cool. I wasn't oh, expecting that. And Uncle Eero. Oh, man. best part of the movie in my he opinion. Was, he was Jensen in the first Iron Man. If yeah. you thought he was familiar, that's why. And he was absolutely my Actually, part. I, he didn't look familiar. I don't know how you recognized he him. He sounds familiar. But he he was sounds awesome. so kind. And that's why I really like him. And then Commander Zhao, that was... Yes, which a lot of people are saying, hey, this is the guy from The Daily Show. I don't watch The Daily Show. Didn't affect me. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, all in all, the casting was pretty well done, I think. And, and I liked who they cast as the flying bison. I thought that was very well cast. <gasps> okay, that was adorable! Having a flying bison playing a flying bison was yes, excellent. Yes, it was excellent. You know what, I, I love that Appa, I guess Appa, right? It looked yeah. like a mashup of a dog, and then something from Where the Wild Things Are. Yes. It was familiar uh, and Appa adorable. Appa was awesome. Now, I really thought it was cool that it, it, it had this Dalai Lama feel to yeah, it. Yeah, I love the way that the, that the avatar is picked the same way that the Dalai Lama is, where mm -hmm. he kind of blindly selects possessions that belong to the previous incarnation. That's really cool. Yeah, now I've got to say, don't bother with doing this in 3D, because <gasps> the people who made the film didn't bother either. No. It's a waste of money, I just, don't do it. Yeah, I agree. I just have no patience for 3D conversions. Like, what <sighs> James Cameron did, cool. Everything else that everyone else is doing, why bother? Yeah, why do we pay an extra $3 it, per ticket for nothing? Exactly. If you didn't shoot it in 3D, don't sell it in 3D. No. It just looks, it's just a waste because of time. It's a fad. It's I'm a already time. wearing a pair of glasses. I don't need another pair. It's fine. But in terms of effects, those were basically the only thing that were occasionally 3D. And they looked great. You know, it, it was pretty basic particle emitters all around, but regardless, 
There were things we haven't seen before, and that gets props in my book. You know what? Being a travel and culture fiend, I love seeing the different elements represented by different ethnicities in the movie, even though some critics out there actually thought it was racist. But you know what? When you've got an Indian man directing, you can go ahead and cast Indians as the bad guys, because no one's gonna call you. No one is gonna call you <laughs> on like it. It's like when you can make fun of your own ethnicity because you're part of it. I know, James Cameron's blue, so it works out well. <laughs> now, in the show, the nations were all pretty much Asian. So that was something Shyamalan threw in. So let's talk about this thing as an adaptation of Avatar, The Last Airbender. I loved the intro. That was brilliant. Very mm -hmm. cool. You know what? It was simple, but an effective way to kind of set up how important the elements are going to be throughout the movie. And it was ripped right out of the TV show. Shyamalan, right off the top, impressed me because he was not afraid to shot for shot adapt parts of this. But then we get into a very different tone as soon as it... How so? It, it's not as funny. Sokka was less funny, there wasn't as much entertaining comedic value really between him and Appa. And by removing that, it just became clear early off that it was going to be dark. I mean, we got three fun gags and that was kind of it for comedic relief. Interesting. Well, you know, I thought the fighting sequences were pretty awesome just because I love seeing how they manifest, like the different elements. That was cool. Yeah. Now, the bending was much more grandiose in this than it could possibly be in an animated series. So, Katara's water bending was beautiful. The oh. fire was dangerous. It was just very cool. Agreed. In terms of water bending, I loved seeing Aang run towards the ocean and then kind of create all these different water bend things. That was, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty genius. I love that. that. That whole sequence was great. And it was a much better call to do the tsunami than the giant glowing fish monster. What? Yeah, in the series, there's a giant, <laughs> he turns into a giant glowing fish monster to wipe out the fire nation. And it just, it doesn't That's really ridiculous. work so well. Yeah. That's now, pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and I've got to say, considering how cool that one was, the, um, the earth bending fight during the jailbreak, that was just really stilted action. Really? I thought it was really cool. I mean, it was, Strong and rigid, kind of like oh, the no, element. No, the, the, the action was cool. Like, the, the way they moved is great, but it just felt really, it just felt really... Strangely choreographed? Yeah, it was, it was like lazy and slow, and that, that I thought was a little lame. Okay, well, what about the actual fighting techniques themselves? Because that was uh, obvious You saw movie. so much more of the difference between mm -hmm. the Tai Chi and the, and the Shaolin Kung Fu. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, there's this... Humans just express that better than animation, certainly Nickelodeon-style animation does. It was great. I really, really enjoyed it. Cool. That. So it sounds like overall as an adaptation, it did oh well? Stunningly well. Yeah. You know, it, it was all the stuff from the reveal of a glider, like <gasps> everything just the came out. The glider was so cool. It pretty much yeah. solidified my opinion that air nomads might have the coolest power. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. <laughs> they're pretty awesome. And it, it just did a great job of revealing everything from Zuko's, Zuko's banishment, his sis, how he's doing with his sister, what's yeah. going on with things like the, the three-part reveal where he says, I, I almost got my honor back. Then at the banquet, you get the full story. And then, later on, you really get it as he's talking to that child. I just, I just really, really liked Zuko. He's my favorite character in the show, and I'm really oh, pleased. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And this blue spirit. Yeah, worked, I didn't really get that so much. Worked even better in the series than... It worked even better in the, in the movie than it did in the series. Really? Because oh, cool. in the series, you, it happens so often, you really don't see how Zuko could possibly do it. But in this, there's just the one time and it works really, really well. That's cool. Well, how about things that, you know, inevitably changed or were left out? Uh, well, I think like, main things that like the, the tattoo is stylized oh. and, and more sensible. It makes much more sense. Um, they expedited a few things like getting the water bending scroll. Okay. Uh, we lost getting to meet Roku, the previous version of the Avatar. That was kind of a shame. Really? Where, where, um, does he meet him in the, in the spirit, spirit world? world? Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And you know, it was kind of a shame to, to miss other things like what happened with the moon spirits and when the moon spirit dies, the Katara, Zuko fight, like little things that, that have a lot more of the, of the real mystery the mythology and, the and the mythology. Yeah, that stuff I would love to have seen yeah, more for like, sure. Yeah, like there's a point where the moon is out and Katara and Zuko are an even match. And then when the sun comes up, Zuko kicks her butt. And so you just get that feel now, that... Now, wait, really briefly, is that because she gets her power from, from the, the moon? From the moon and he gets his from the sun. Right. So oh, little things like that, you know. I kind of wish they 
put in a little more of that detail as well. <laughs> yeah, would have been nice. It would have been nice. Okay. Um, and, and there was another detail about Katara being not allowed to train with the boys. The Northern Water Tribe doesn't allow girls to waterbend in that way. Really? Little things like that, oh, yeah. Okay, but, well, I mean, like, understandably, like with any adaptation like Harry Potter or Twilight, you have to remove some things to get to point A to point B, but... It's all the more reason to watch the TV show, it sounds like, because that's Oh, cool. absolutely. I mean, the movie's been getting a lot of flack, but I enjoyed it so much I watched it twice. <laughs> it was great. Oh, my I took God. my mother to it. It was that fun. <laughs> it was really well, we good. do tend to disagree with a lot of critics out there, mostly, because, you know, they come from a strictly observer critique perspective, and we come from the geek perspective. You know, we're right in the trenches. Exactly, and I hope The Last Airbender keeps doing well at the box, because we've got two more movies to see if yeah, it does. I'm really looking Here's hoping. To that. we got to round out that trilogy. Yeah. So, Remember to keep your eyes right here for a look at all your geek movies and all your geek games from the two geeks who always have something to say. And you can keep up with all our past previews and reviews and have your say on yourgeeknews.com. What is this? Anyway, Fire Nation is here.